So now we're going to get some practice on Amazon Bedrock. And the first thing I want you to do, if you want to follow along, is to switch the region and to go to US East, Northern Virginia, which is US East 1. The reason why I want to be there for the whole course is that the availability of some AI services is restricted to some regions for now. And so being in US East 1 will guarantee that you will be able to access all the services you need. Okay, so now that we're do good, let's go into the search bar and let's tap Amazon Bedrock. Next, we're going to click on Get Started and we are into the Amazon Bedrock UI. So let's close this and we're going to explore together. So here we go. So we are in the overview and the first thing I want to show you is the providers list on the left hand side. So we have to choose a foundation model to get started with generative AI. And we can choose the foundation model from many different types of providers. Here you have a list of all the providers available to you right now. And this list may extend, so have a look on your own time. And if you see more providers, don't worry. The ones that are the most important are covered in this course. So we have uh, AI21 Labs, we have Amazon, we have Anthropic, and so on. And so we're going to be using some of these models. But the good thing about it is that when you click on one of the provider, you get a lot of information about what the provider is. So the models they have, as well as some examples that you can use with some of these models, and we'll explore them very, very soon. And then the types of models we have access directly from this provider. As you can see for Amazon Titan, we have access to all the models right here. And for each model, there's what's called a model card, which explains to us what the model is about. So about the supported format, and then some attributes, some languages that are supported and so on. If you scroll down, you even get some information about API requests. So when you use Amazon Bedrock, right now we're going to do everything in our browser. But when you want to implement a real application, you will have to write some code. And so therefore, they give you some simple code to use these specific models. So bottom line is Amazon Bedrock makes it super easy for you to understand how to use and select the right models. But so let's get access to some of these models. And so to do so, we're going to scroll down all the way here and click on model access. So here on this page, you will conveniently see all the types of models you have access to on AWS. And to be able to use them, you must first enable the models. So as you can see right now, there is all these models have are available to request. Some of them can be sometimes unavailable for some reason. Um, you can should contact support sometimes and so on, but we don't need access to all models. But still, if you wanted to make this quick, just click on enable all models. So here we request access to all these models right here. We're good to go. Let's click on next. And then you need to enter some use case details around your company name, your URL. And this is just some survey information. It's not very, very important. So enter this. So here I put Stefan Marek and I'll put www.stefanmarek.com. And then the industry I operate in is going to be education. And then this is for my internal employees. And then it's just testing Amazon Bedrock. Let's click on next. And now let's click on submit. So this doing enabling the models does not cost any money, but using the models will cost some money. So in this course, I try to keep cost at a minimum, but of, when you're using generative AI and AI overall, it's going to be rarely free. And so therefore, if you want to follow along with me and perform the hands-on, you will have to spend some money. At the beginning of the course, I gave you access to the entire budget you will have for this course and that I've spent, but it's good for you to make your own decision. Again, you cannot just also see me do and it's going to be fine. You don't have to do everything as I do. So sometimes you will get access failed. For example, these ones we cannot access to because we should talk to Amazon support. So don't worry too much about these error messages. As long as you have access to some of these models, you're good to go. And to get access to the models, it can take a few minutes. So as you can see some of them, for example, from Amazon are already granted, but others are in progress, for example, uh, from Anthropic. And if you want to read the terms and conditions of a model, you can click here and access it. So now let me just pause this video until I get access to all my models. Okay, so it took about a minute, but now as you can see, everything is access granted except the few models from Meta and from Anthropic. Next, let's go into the examples tab on the left-hand side. So now we have access to a lot of examples that Amazon Bedrock is giving us, 
and they're good to explore from a learning perspective. So you can explore a lot of them on your own if you wanted to. And you can filter them by providers. So the ones that are for Amazon specifically. And then the modality, is it a text type of prompt or is it an image type of prompt? So you can do some tests. And for every prompt right here, you get access to some information. So here, this is a prompt to uh, summarize a meeting transcript into action items. And you see what the prompt is. You see what the configuration was. And then on the bottom, you see what the response was. So you don't have to run the examples on your own if you don't want to. You can just look at them to understand what was the prompt and what was the response. On top of it, it provides you code samples to implement this into your own code if you needed to. So it's very handy. And for example, if we look at images, we can see here blue backpack on a table and it generates these kind of images. So this is cool because we can learn about AI without spending any money, but we want to actually try it out. So let's go ahead and actually explore what's called the text play playground. So here we need to first select a model. So I'm going to close configuration. And for example, we need to select a model. So I'll click on select model. I'll choose Amazon. And then we can choose um, Titan G1 Express. Perfect. And apply. So as you can see here, the throughput is on demand. That means that we're going to be paid on demand when we use the model. And so as soon as we start using the model, we are going to spend some money. But let's try it out. Uh, let's actually say, what is Amazon Web Services? And we click on Run. And now we get the response directly from the model. So here we learn about Amazon Web Services, and it's quite a detailed answer we're getting when data is generated over time. As you can see, we have a lot of information given to us by the model. So we learn about overall AWS here. Then we learn about the compute aspects right here, then the databases right here, the analytics, networking, the mobile, and it goes on and on and on and on. So as you can see, this type of model, for example, gives us a very lengthy type of answer. You can also have a look at the chat. So the chat here is again for you to select a model. So let's take another one. Let's take Anthropic. And then we're going to get uh, Cloud3 um, Sonnet. And again, I'm going to say, what is AWS? And we click on Run. And here we get the answer directly from the model. The cool thing about this page is that we're going to get some information around the model metrics as well. So as you can see here, the latency was seven seconds. This is the number of input tokens. So this is how much uh, how much text went into uh, the model. So 12 input tokens exactly. And we see the output token counts. So about 300. This is the length of the answer. So a token is not exactly a word. It's a bit more complicated. But this is 300. This is a pretty lengthy answer. And we also have some information around the configuration. Now, this configuration, we're going to, have to look at it in greater detail later on. So no need to look at it. But as you can see here, I was able to ask a prompt. And again, I get an answer for AWS, which stands for Amazon Web Services. And then we get some key points about AWS. The fact it is infrastructure as a service that has a wide range of services. We're looking at the AI ones, but there's so many and so on. So as you can see, different models will give you different kinds of answers. And choosing the model is going to be a big part of your work. On top of it, we can put text, but we can also add files if you wanted to, if the model supports it. And for image, finally, so here, um, this is going to cost you a lot more money to generate an image and to generate text. So don't do it if you don't want to. Uh, we're talking about cents, but still four cents or eight cents, but still it is some money. So here's an example, generate images from a prompt and we say blue backpack on the table and we click on run, on run. And we get the output of three images right here of blue backpacks and they were fully generated by AI, which is pretty cool. So again, the configurations can be pretty vast. So what type of orientation do we want? What size of the image we want? How many images do we want? And so on. And so this is how to tune this image playground. But here we've seen the basics of Amazon Bedrock and Chen AI. So we were able to generate some text directly using the text feature or the chat feature. We were able to generate some images as well. We're able to have a look at all the providers and some examples associated with them. And also we saw how to enable access to the models. So that's it for the overview of Amazon Bedrock. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next lecture.